Welcome to this short video on the Master of Business Engineering in the way it is offered at the Faculty of Economics and Business of KU Leuven, which is the University of Leuven in Belgium. Our Master of Business Engineering is a two-year master um, which is organized at the main campus in uh, Leuven itself, which is a small city next to Brussels in Belgium. And the Master of Business Engineering is, uh, first and foremost, a business degree. We are a faculty of economics and business. So our main goal is indeed to, in, in, in the way it's also mentioned there in the second bullet point, to, to teach you how business activities and processes can be optimally organized. We will teach you how um, companies function Right? We will give you the right background to become a versatile um, all-round manager. We are indeed giving you a management uh, education. This is the business component of business engineering. At the same time, it's also an engineering degree. And this, um, this orientation resides in the fact that we will indeed uh, teach you how to solve managerial problems, how to tackle uh, everyday problems encountered in uh, companies and organizations, how to tackle those from an analytical and quantitative point of view, right? We will teach you how to do the number crunching to make better decisions. We will also explain to you obviously how to do the mathematics, but also how to use the, uh, the, the right software tools to um, uh, find the right basis to make uh, better decisions. All of this in combination also with a business perspective on science and engineering, which is in part uh, based on the fact that we will explain to you how, uh, for instance, how uh, energy distribution, for instance, an electricity distribution network, how it is important for the economy of a country, right? But on the other hand, also simply, um, how uh, supply chains, how logistics, how innovation processes within a company, how they work. We will you give you a good understanding of these uh, processes and um, give you the right business perspective on these uh, activities. So what are we looking for? Our target is students with a solid background in business and in engineering. Right? The name says it all. Uh, for starters, since we are uh, giving you a business degree, you should have the right background in uh, management science and in economics. We are assuming that you have had some prior exposure to uh, all the relevant management domains, such as accounting, such as marketing, such as finance, such as strategic management, such as, such as production planning and logistics, uh, such as also uh, economics, basic economics uh, course, right? This is the, uh, the, the business component. And then on the other hand, there is also the engineering component. We are assuming that you have uh, the right quantitative skills, the right mathematical skills, strong mathematical skills um, to start our courses. Uh, this combination of business and in engineering in um, many bachelor programs worldwide, this is typically found under terms such as industrial engineering, industrial management, management science engineer and engineering, and, and, and many other names. The name of the program by itself is not important, but you should have had a, uh, a strong exposure both to business and management on the one hand and on the other hand to uh, engineering courses or at the very least to uh, the right uh, quantitative skills in order to, to do the number crunching to make better decisions. Okay, so this is uh, the profile that we are looking for. Now, as for the program structure, um, the master is uh, spread over two years. Um, as you can read here, it is 120 ECTS, where the ECTS stands for European Credit Transfer System. Let's just call these credits, uh, 120 credits, where each credit 
is uh, accounting for for an average student that is um, between 25 and 30 hours of work right so these ECTS they are a measure of the workload and an average study year a full-time year of study is normally 60 ECTS so 120 ECTS amounts to two full years of work and schematically uh, the uh, picture on the left here uh, depicts these 120 ECTS. Each little colored block would be one credit. Um, that should work out if you have, I guess, uh, what is it, 10 lines and 12 columns here in the table. So there's some color coding here. The red part, these are the core courses. These are the compulsory courses which are shared, which are common. Um, for all the students who enroll in the program, right? So this is the common basis that we start from. Uh, and there uh, you can find the uh, courses such as business analysis, applications of operations research, applications of statistics, energy technology and energy economy, management control, operations, strategy, strategic management, and also philosophy and ethics. Now, you notice that these core courses account for 24, uh, sorry, 42 credits. 42 credits out of 120, that is approximately one third of the entire workload. This also means that about two thirds of the, the entire program are flexible, are uh, based on your own choice. You can choose your own specialization. You can, you, you can choose in which areas to deepen or to broaden your knowledge. And this comes under the form of a major and a minor. You have the choice for a major and a minor. The major to start with gives you um, seven options. There is accounting and financial management, risk and finance. There is uh, marketing, production and logistics, data science and uh, business analytics. There is the major on industry, global value chains and new technologies. And then finally also a uh, major on technology and entrepreneurship. Okay, so um, you make a choice for one of those seven and then each major has a course list. And typically the course list contains more than 24 credits so that once you pick a major, you also still can choose the courses that interest you most from within the major, okay? So a lot of flexibility there for um, composing your own course package. On the one hand, under the form of the major. On the other hand, also um, with a minor, okay? Uh, the minor, I, I haven't listed all the options here in the slide, but you can already take those seven options for the major. You can also consider them for the minor. And it would be the same course package, um, but then uh, for the minor, the difference is that um, the courses for the major are typically scheduled in the first year, first year of the two, and the minor courses are followed in the second year, right? Apart from the seven options that you have for the major, as a minor, you can, you can pick some more. Uh, there is a minor research in economics, international business, there is business informatics, there is corporate sustainability, there is European affairs management, and some more. I, I will not list them all, right? Um, so wh why are these scheduled in two different years? And, and why also, because uh, you, you might think at first sight that the terms major and minor, that these two names are a bit deceptive based on their number of credits. And you can see that the major is 24 credits, but so is the minor. Um, there is a difference, namely, you also see the master's thesis here, which is the green part. Well, this master's thesis is your own little research project, which you will um, develop and on which you will indeed write an academic document, a master's thesis. Um, in the majority of the cases, the master's thesis is written on a subject in the domain of the major. 
And indeed, in this way, the major accounts not for 24, but rather for 48 credits in total. And in this way, indeed, the major is more important than the minor, which explains the different uh, naming, um, but also the timing of the courses, because the major courses, the 24 credits of the major, are typically taken in the first year, and then the master's thesis is written in the second year, so that you first take all the courses, which prepare you, which give you the right background uh, to, to then do some more research, some more um, independent work um, in the second year, in the master's thesis. Uh, and then the minor, which is a, special, a second specialization track, is then done in parallel with the writing of the master's thesis in uh, the first uh, domain. Uh, then finally, there are also six credits of uh, electives and uh, the majority of the courses in our faculty, there are certainly exceptions, but the majority of the courses is exactly six ECTS, six credits. So, so let's just say that this elective of six uh, ECTS, this is exactly one, uh, one course. And um, in the standard schedule, in the standard program, uh, these uh, six credits uh, for the elective are also scheduled in the first year. So what many students do, um, they already have a, a vague idea about what they want to do as a minor. They pick one of the courses out of the minor, they take it as an elective in the first year to, to sample, to taste this domain. If then they like it, then they already took one course, six credits out of the 24 for the minor, and then they have a new elective in the second year. If in the end they didn't like this particular area that much, then it just uh, counts as a free elective and they uh, can ch still choose another minor and take 24 credits in the chosen area in the second year. Okay, so, so, so this gives you an overview of the structure of uh, the two years of study. Now, why would you uh, choose to study at our Faculty of Economics and Business in uh, Leuven at the first place? Um, there is, uh, well, there's a list of uh, possible reasons here. Let me give you uh, some of them. Um, our programs are practice oriented. You will notice that, especially in the, in, in the major and minor courses, in the specialization courses, there will be quite some guest lectures, quite some seminars by managers, by government officials, which, which give you direct exposure, direct contact with practice, right? And also uh, many master thesis subjects are um, seen as a type of uh, consulting project that is uh, done in collaboration with a company. Right. Apart from this, there are other opportunities also for internships, for management projects, which can be done uh, either during the uh, academic semesters and or during the summer between the two years. And uh, some of this work, for instance, for an internship, can, only be, can also be credited within the program. So you can also earn credits using an internship. So these are quite a number of interesting uh, options, right? Um, our programs are student-oriented. I, I would dare to claim, you don't have to take my word for it, but I will give you some uh, references at the end of the presentation where you can contact some student ambassadors who will hopefully confirm that uh, we have a very good student-professor relationship, huh? uh, especially also in the specialization courses. Uh, we typically teach in small groups. We um, have professors who are really experts, specialists, all in their particular field, and who are very glad to share their experience, their know-how, to share it with the students. Um, so generally, there is a, a, a very low threshold for, for contacting professors, for helping, uh, for asking them for help, either with a course or with the choice of a uh, internship project, for instance, or with the selection of a master thesis topic and whatever. Okay. Um, I think this next point here, this might very well be the main reason why you would choose to come to Leuven in the first place. Simply our international reputation. Leuven has a very strong reputation. You can also um, 
evaluate this by yourself by looking at the international rankings of universities and of business schools where we typically score very well um, international reputation both in research and in education right and this is very important we indeed do offer a program that is rigorous that is academic that is strongly founded also within the research that is being done within the faculty by the faculty and uh, there are very clear spillovers towards the uh, specialization courses that we are offering and the research that is that is being done um, and so this is really one of the key points that I, I think we, we, we should underline and that you should really take along uh, if you uh, are considering to come and study in Leuven. We are really very well uh, recognized internationally, both for research and for education, and this really counts. Um, internationally oriented, uh, we are attracting more and more students in our masters from um, not only from Belgium, but also from uh, Europe as a whole, many European countries, but then apart from this also all the other continents are, are represented here. We really have a very um, multicultural and international uh, atmosphere at the campus. Um, we support our students in shaping their own career. On the one hand, this means that, as I mentioned in one of the previous slides, you get a lot of flexibility in choosing your own specialization, your own specialization track, in um, choosing your own orientation, um, in shaping your own profile when you graduate, so that you're well prepared to, to start an expert job in exactly the, the, the area that, that you wish to, uh, to delve into. Um, but apart from that, we also have a career corner. We have also have a, um, a specific support service that helps you um, get into contact with companies, either for uh, consulting projects, for internships, uh, or for uh, trying to find a job uh, for after your graduation. Uh, this is also uh, helped with a number of job fairs that are organized with um, uh, our industrial partners where m many companies have little booths where they explain what they are doing, what is their main activity, what type of um, employees they are looking for so that you can evaluate for yourself whether or not you would actually be interested in uh, working for these, uh, for these companies. Right? So this is one way in which we collaborate with uh, companies, but many of our uh, professors also have uh, research projects, industrial projects with companies, which have uh, obviously very interesting spillovers also towards the teaching in the form of the, the cases that are covered in uh, many of the majors and minors. Um, Okay, so, 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 so that is a, 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 list, a list of interesting reasons why you would come to Leuven. Um, what is uh, not mentioned here, but what is worth mentioning anyway, and might be very uh, interesting and relevant for you, is the fact that we have um, interesting tuition fees. We have, from a global, from a worldwide perspective, we have relatively low tuition fees. And you might have questions um, with this, because in the end, if it's difficult to evaluate the quality of a product, then perhaps the price of the product might, rep might, might, might be a measure for the quality of the product, right? That is true. But you should know that we get very generous subsidies from our government for each student that enrolls. And this is the way in which, despite the, the, the strong academic orientation and at least this is what we would like to think, the high quality of education that we offer here at KU Leuven, this is how we are still able to maintain these low tuition fees. Thanks to the high uh, subsidies that we receive from the government, um, I think uh, it, it would be uh, a pity not to try to benefit and to take advantage of this uh, as, as a student. Okay, um, admission requirements. What do you need before you can get admitted to our programs? Well, this is an academic master program, so you need prior academic knowledge, obviously under the form of a bachelor degree, right? You need a, uh, a bachelor degree, an academic bachelor's degree, 
uh, with the right orientation. And this can be a degree in um, economics, business economics management, but then with a strong quantitative and or technological component, right? It should be uh, quantitatively, mathematically, it should be sufficiently rigorous. Um, either uh, that or you would have an academic bachelor's degree with a strong engineering focus, with a strong quantitative focus, but at least with some exposure, with some prior uh, exposure already to economic, economics and management. Okay, so, so both those two um, main ingredients of business engineering should already be present in your prior education, both uh, business as well as engineering, or at least the quantitative uh, methods. Um, there are language requirements, which are listed here, which, which I will not all uh, comment in detail at the moment. And then also some additional requirements um, under the form of a score on a GMAT or a GRE test. Um, and for uh, the latter two uh, requirements, the language requirements and the GMAT or GRE, um, in the next slide, there are some mentions of uh, exemptions that can be uh, obtained. In particular, for the language uh, proficiency, uh, there is an exemption for students who obtained either their high school diploma or a university degree in English in one of the countries that are listed. And then for the additional requirement for a GMAT or a GRE score, there are also exemptions uh, when your prior degree was obtained in um, an institute that uh, falls under one of the bullet points that is mentioned in this, uh, in this slide. Okay, so career perspectives. Uh, why would you wish to pursue a degree in business engineering in the first place? Well, obviously, because you want to use it. You can see it as a, a stepping stone uh, towards a career. And um, there is a, a non-exhaustive list of possibilities uh, at the bottom of this slide. Um, many of our graduates are employed when they start uh, as supply chain analyst, R&D manager, financial analyst, certified accountant, marketing manager, data scientist, the list is too long to, 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 uh, <laughs> to be exhaustive. The point that I want to make is here that um, there's a lot of flexibility. Huh? Um, the main goal of our master in business engineering is to turn you into an all-round versatile manager. And that is exactly why it's very difficult to give an exhaustive list of possible functions that you can take up afterwards, simply because the list is too long. Uh, we want to make you robust. We want to make you flexible, such that whatever job the company gives you, you are well prepared to, to, to take it, to handle it. Um, typically, our graduates start in expert positions in companies, in organizations, and then after a few years, they move up to, uh, to executive functions, to more um, general management functions, right? So essentially, we are preparing you to take up a management function in whatever company, in whatever organization you would be interested in, in, in working. And um, if I look at the surveys that we regularly do with our alumni uh, and if I briefly compare the graduates in business engineering uh, with, with other graduates, uh, other graduates from our faculty, so with other management and economics degrees, then we do notice that more than the other degrees, our business engineering graduates typically start in large companies, in international companies, and also more than other students, they would typically start in consulting uh, companies, right? But, but this is not, these are not the only options, obviously, but um, proportionally, more graduates uh, from business engineering go to large companies and consulting companies compared to some of the other graduates in, uh, in our uh, faculty. Okay, now you don't have to take my word for it. You can also simply ask um, some of our ambassadors. Um, three ambassadors are listed here. So these are um, both alumni as well as uh, current students who are actually still enrolled in the program uh, today. 
Uh, if you go to our website, then uh, from the ambassadors, not only for business engineering, but for all the programs that we offer in our faculty, you can find testimonials, you can find um, a description of their experience, uh, their um, uncensored, uncut uh, experience of working, of studying in our uh, faculty, of uh, being in our enrolled in our programs and you can also find their contact details online such that you can very easily get their input on uh, a number of practical questions that you might have. Yeah? So obviously you can always contact um, our faculty. You can also, um, I think in the next slide, I will give you uh, the contact details. You can also always ask our um, faculty itself uh, any questions that you might have regarding, be it accommodation, food, city life, cost of living, um, availability of facilities for sport and exercise, uh, the specific organization of the uh, program, uh, questions regarding the content of some courses, all of these options, well, you can ask them uh, to us or you can ask uh, the, uh, the ambassadors, they will be very gladly uh, helping you out with um, any questions that you might have. Um, and so in my slides, there are there's a number of links here. I think if you are watching this video, perhaps you will not be able to click directly on the links. But if you simply use Google and if you type KU Leuven Economics and Business and then prospective students or student ambassadors, then you will find all the information that I outlined in the previous uh, in the previous slides. The general email address, if you do want to um, send us some questions directly, uh, is also mentioned here. It's simply admissions.feb, which is short for Faculty of Economics and Business at kuleuven.be. Right? So I hope this uh, short video gave you an overview of the possibilities of business engineering within our faculty. Uh, we are very much looking forward to First of all, to hearing from you, if you have extra questions, if you have uh, a need for additional information, feel free to contact us. And otherwise, I also very much look forward to welcoming you next year here in Leuven.